shift is needed? I think it's really a shift, a shift in consciousness to, to make what Sandra does. She does it so beautifully in playing parts that are not specifically dragon ladies or newscasters, um, but who are multifaceted human beings. So how do we get to there where it's not just a few people doing it, but that's the norm? that we as Asian Americans and people of color are seen as human beings. We're still caught in a, 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 a clicheism. I just did a small job. I put on this long wig that I had, you know, like a rocker. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put on a bandana over the, the long wig. So, so I said, I'm going to play this like I would like to play it. And they wouldn't accept that. Right away, he's, they said, we, ha we have s uh, uh, something for you. Would you take off that bandana? They were going to put a beard, you know, the, the, the Fu Manchu type of thing. I said, I'm, why don't you just let me take, put the wig? You don't have time. I talked them into it because they didn't have the time or budget, right? So, so they let me keep the wig. They took the bandana off, and they gave me one of those little Chinese hats, you know. Then they put a Chinese, took my, you know, nice clothes off and put a Chinese robe, you know, the, the, the mandarin type of thing. And so I was kind of stuck in that. And I said, geez, this is the way I started, you know, 50 some odd years ago. So I, I don't have the answer to how to break the cliche. Because that image is still out there. Uh, in a way, it still exists because it's convenient for the writer and director to jump to that image. I think a lot of our battle has been um, when we play immigrants, uh, it, they have been historically kind of stereotypes, but mostly it's because we actually haven't heard their story. But ho hopefully we'll, we'll come around to, I think that there are a lot more people or at least young filmmakers who are still interested in telling those stories. We have to speak up. We have to write our own stories. I'm really a firm believer of that. Because if we don't tell our stories, who is going to tell it? What is, what is truthful and what is your story and what is your parents' story, yes, please tell that. Um, th that's a truly American story and, and you know, that's what we need more of. When I was growing up, there were three networks, right? The only Asian you saw anybody on was Star Trek, right? There was no, no, there was no cable. There's cable now, there's DirecTV, there's Google, there's everything. So the youth today is just getting such an influx of information of many different types of people and a huge wave of Asian images that are coming in that I think the generation that's growing up right now, I, I'm a very hopeful person, I'm a very positive person. Every kid in the United States now, wherever you are, you're seeing all those images. And it's rapidly transforming people's consciousness in a way that our generation didn't have. On Cafe American, it was set in Paris, and I was playing a character that was like Amel de Marcos. So they said they wanted me to have an accent. So I said, oh, great, a, a French accent? <laughs> no, really, I'm being serious. And they were like, no, you have to have, you know, uh, an Asian accent. I said, why? And they, well, she's in Paris. No, you have to have an Asian accent. So I went in and I did what I thought was, you know, a, a Chinatown accent, even though this woman was from wherever. But I thought, I did that because I knew she was elegant, she was always overdressed, and I thought, well, what would be the juxtaposition of that? So, peasant Chinatown accent and very highly dressed. Okay, that's funny, that's comedy. Well, in that, I went to network, and the network, ex I don't think you were there, Kenny, but the network executives, they called me and they said, the good news is you got the job. The bad news is they don't want to make you a series regular. And this was after I had, uh, you know, d done the deal, the seven-year deal and the money and the whole thing. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I went to network and I did this. Why? And they said, well, they're afraid that your accent is going to offend people. Well, I told them to go f themselves, I, literally. I was like, no, I went to the final thing. If they had pulled it right before yes. I had done the test, I would have said okay. But I went through it, and if they want me, then they have to pay me, and I will do the accent. Well, they went for it. They did, I was a series regular on that, I did the accent. 
And the best part of that was that people came up to me afterwards and said, I love the fact that you're doing an accent and you're, you sound like my parents. It's all a matter of perception, right? And if you do it with conviction and without any shame and you say, this is the character, do the accent. And sometimes you'll say, you know what? It doesn't fly here. That's, uh, this person's gotta be Asian American. I think sometimes they mix up the, the Asian story and the Asian American story because they're completely different. I mean, I guess it depends on the show or the project or whoever's casting it or writing it. But if that person isn't clear on, you know, the difference between those two things and even within that, like, there's so many, um, you can be like Filipino American and Korean American and it's completely different from being just Korean or Filipino. And when you go into an, an audition and they're casting for Asian, but they, they're not sure if it's, you know, if the role is Asian American or Asian, they just want Asian. And then they tell you to be more Asian. It's like, what are you looking for? Am I supposed to be American? I am American. I, I haven't specifically gotten into any kind of roles that have made me uncomfortable, but I also do like to present um, diversity when a role isn't clear how it's written, why does it have to be necessarily Caucasian or why, you know, why can't we add a different, you know, flavor to it. So I definitely speak up in that respect and they say, you know, bring it on, let's see if it works. You can't force it, you know, you can't force diversity, but sometimes if it just works out, it's, it's a plus for all of us. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the actor's job to be, a, a, you know, a, a revolutionist. We're just artists. And that role could oh be... Oh my God, I totally disagree with you. What do you think an artist is? Well, well <laughs> we're powerless within, within the filmmaking. You, you just have to trust your director, and you don't know if the part is even going to be good or not. Uh, and you could have a great feeling, and, you could be, and it could turn out crap because of the way it was edited. So you, you have to just bring truth to what it is you're doing. I don't think it needs to be on our shoulders to do that. I mean, if, if you are a writer, that's great. And if you are a filmmaker, that's great. But not every actor is a great writer or filmmaker. I think what really kind of goes through this whole conversation that we're having is, for me, it's about control, okay? I'm a control guy. <clears throat> you're a producer. I am a control guy. <laughs> And as a person behind the scenes, you know, I realized very early in my career, even when I was an executive at, at NBC and then an executive at ABC, that the people above me were always going to control my fate. So that's why I said, okay, I'm going to end up becoming a producer and I'm going to control the content that I produce. And I am a much happier, freer person because I am not beholden to other people and what their images of what Asian Americans are going to be or what the content is going to be. I'm creating the content. I'm going to have to wrap this up, but I thank you so, first of all, I would thank our panelists so much. It's been a really wonderful evening.